uh, children of Israel. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? Verse five, we remember the fish we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the garlic, the onions. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 14. And I'm not going to do a lot of exposition is what I'm saying. And verse 3 and 4. Everybody ready? Here we go. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Verse four. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. That's the bondage mindset. All right. Let's go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 31 to 33. Just a couple pages back or right at the top of this page. It's right at the top. Well, in my Bible, it's right at the top of this page. And it begins by saying these are the 10 spies that have gone into the promised land uh, per Moses uh, order. And now they're coming back with their report. And 10 of the 12 spies have what we call an evil, bad, or frustrating report. And this is what, what they're saying. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature, size. There, was saw, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight or mind. And so we were in their sight. Let's go to uh, Numbers 14 and verse 2. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or only if we had died in this wilderness. That's the grasshopper mentality and the wilderness mindset. The bondage mentality. Let's go back to what we used to do. Let's go back to what we're familiar to. Let's go back to what we're conditioned to. Let's default back into that which we had as opposed to going forward, even though we can't see or know everything that's going to happen, but trusting the one that is setting us free. The wilderness, I'm sorry, the, the grasshopper mindset is one that you see all that's before you is too great. Anything that you set your hand to will not prosper because it's too great of a, a deal, an ordeal. The size, the giant, that's what that's indicating in our lives. The things that we find that may be minuscule actually are enormous in our emotions and trying to deal with it. Because we forget that there's a God that is setting us free, that is going with us and is for us and is fighting for us as well. Amen? And the last one, the kingdom of my, the kingdom of God mindset. Turn to first Peter chapter four. And verse one and two. Everybody got it. Amen. This is Peter talking. Therefore, of course, you know, to read the, the previous scriptures to find out what it's there for. 
Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he who that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of the men. I'm sorry, for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Our mindset with this type of mindset, the kingdom of God mindset is one that where we no longer desire our will and way. But we desire the will of God, just as God, Christ, lived his life on this earth, submitted unto God. This is how we are to live. As a matter of fact, you can go to John chapter 4 and verse 34, if you would. This is just a little caveat. And I pray the Holy Spirit, forgive me if it's not if it's out of line, but I think it's okay. And we're talking about Jesus. He was talking to the woman at the well and he tells his disciples this. Jesus said to them, my food, my sustenance, what I am all about is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That is the kingdom of God mindset that we, every one of us that are born again, ought to have and maintain and seek. And of course, you're going to be fighting against the bondage mindset, oh, I just need to go back to what I'm used to. I feel better if I just slide into whatever I'm used to and I'm good. And or, you know what? This is just too much. It ain't no way in the world I can actually do anything victorious in this. This, this is just too great. My hands are too short. There's no way in this world that I'm able to go through this and be victorious. In other words, we take our eyes off of who it is that has set us free and has given us purpose and a plan and has, is directing us by his spirit, his word. And we're thinking in and of our own power how we're going to get something done. There's power in our bodies. Yes, there's power in the things that we can do. But there is greater power in that name, Jesus, the Christ of God, as we saw earlier. And in that name, we are victorious and made able to overcome because he has already overcome all things for us. Amen. 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 So, uh, where do I want to go with this, Father? With this bondage mindset, you believe in your mind, it certainly cannot get any better. See, some of us will be right there. You know what I'm saying. I'm used to this. Oh, it can't get any better than this. For me, in this land that's flowing, and we saw earlier with leeks and garlics and onions, that's all it really is. It's not the real fruit as uh, the land of milk and honey. It's just something you get used to and you say, I'll accept it. I don't want to change it. As a matter of fact, I feel more comfortable back there under duress and in a slave mentality in bondage as opposed to being set free to see what God has laid before you in splendor. Amen? Wow. Um, and uh, in other words, you would even try to have your, or you would prefer, hear this, you would prefer your needs to be met by your taskmaster. I'll take the whip. I'll take the sun all day. I'll take the burden. Just so long as I get the leeks and garlics. And that fish every once in a while. And here God is setting a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That you can sumptuously endure and enjoy every day of your life because you're in him. But their mindset the Egyptian, I'm sorry, the children of Israel mindset was conditioned from 400 years of bondage. They could not see beyond their present status. When we get born again, trust me, without the renewing of our mind, you can't see what God has for you. You become used to and you may default right back into what it was that God has taken you from and or, uh, yes, set you free from. Amen? Okay. That's that mindset. Now, the next one is the grasshopper mentality and the wilderness mindset. This is the mindset that you are not willing and are unable to see or believe in the reality of God's goodness is yours by being in covenant with him. 
And unbelief causes them or causes the individual to forfeit. See, this is the key. This body of believers right here. Unbelief can come in and destroy the very thing that God is building for you as a body. And you will forfeit it. This is why the vision for this place is so important. The vision is so important that we don't forfeit what God has given us by our mentality being focused on what we can do in our own power and even in our own understanding, but that we can have what God has set before us, the land of milk and honey, the vision that we have, it is finished, but in order for it to come to pass, we have to partake in it. The body is the one or the mechanism that God does his mighty works through and establishes his covenant here in the earth realm so that others will hunger and thirst for it, not for leeks and garlics, but for the milk and honey. Amen? Things that make you say, hmm. Why did they have a grasshopper wilderness mindset? And I just went over that because they didn't believe that they were able to overcome. They were walking by sight. The Spirit of the Lord tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we walk by sight, we will see whatever it is we face as too great to handle. Amen? Let me keep going. Uh, Numbers 14, 12. Let me read that real quick. And all the children of Israel mur murmured, I read that earlier, murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? Well, guess what? God gave them. I remember reading in Romans, I think it was, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Remember that? Romans chapter 1. Well, I'm, I'm saying here today before you, God gave them exactly what they said. He let them wander for 40 years. Those men that were 20 years of age or older that were of war, able to be of war. He waited 40 years for them to die out before he took their children and said, now, you guys are going to believe me or not. <laughs> and I guarantee you, when Joshua was taking them in, they said, yeah, we're going to do exactly what you said. We're not going around that mountain one more time. But be careful what you say. That's critical. The enemy knows that when you say something, if it's by faith or not, and so does your body, and so do you. That testimony about talking to your shoulder, you better believe that's real. Because the enemy would say, aha, she doesn't believe that arthritis, bursitis, come on in, do what you do, stiffen her arm, make it such a problem she can't even focus on God. Her desire isn't on him, it's on that thing. In other words, keeping your focus on something other than him, meaning God. Amen? So when you get a little pain next time, I'm, I'm giving you permission, try it. If you don't already do so, try it. I guarantee you it'll work because there's no other name above that name. So when you speak to your body, it must respond. And this is why that mentality, a grasshopper mentality will tell you, well, I'm not able, just accept it. And you will wander, hear this, you will wander in life in the wilderness of your mind thinking that there is no answer. Lord, have mercy. God wants to do something really great here today. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not going around the mountain. We're not having a bondage mindset. We don't have a grasshopper mentality in a wilderness mindset. We have a kingdom of God established by his covenant mindset here as disciples of Christ. That as that overflow comes, it goes out freely to whosoever will. 
In other words, we are a beacon of light. But it only comes by our mentality and our mindset being set on that which we already have, the mind of Christ, for as he is, so are we in this world and in the world to come. Let's look at this. Uh, I just said that earlier, grasshopper mentality leads and drives you into the wilderness to wander until they die or you die. In other words, you can get it fixed, but if you don't, this is exactly where you're going to end up, just walking your life and you're going to end up just dying off. And all the purpose, listen, there's a scripture, I believe it's one, Psalm 113 and verse 7 and 8. That I claim that this is what God is doing to me. And, and I'll go back to that. Hold, hang on. The Holy Spirit is going to give me a little gratitude, a little, little latitude, I mean. If you guys will do the same. Psalm 113, verse 7 and 8. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's where God found most of us or all of us. On the ash heap of life, on the ash heap of this world, cast aside. Those of us that, you know, not worth much. And we even saw that in our own eyes. This is what this mentality is telling us also about a bondage mentality and a grasshopper mentality and mindset. Our value is not valuable to ourselves or to others and as they see us and how we see ourselves at times. However, what God is saying, I see value in you. That's why I was willing. See, you're only willing to pay for something for what you think it is valued at. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? This is why I said earlier, God wants to do something great in all of us today because he values us. So much so that he sent his son to die. To redeem you. Back unto himself. And so we were all set on a ash heap because we were all headed in a direction that we had no idea until we came to the knowledge of who Christ is in salvation. That he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. That's where and that's who you are. You are to be seated in heavenly places where Christ is and taken out of the ash heap, off the ash heap. Let him display his life through you so that you can glorify him and you can receive the benefit from that in Jesus name. Let's let me just get out of here. We've already done that. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. Yep. I hope you were coming today to hear God. I hope I gave you something for you to cling to and to meditate upon, as opposed to just something that, well, I got through Sunday. <laughs> I'm good. Let me check that off. See? I, before I read that, Theo, uh, when, if you guys didn't come Wednesday, so that's, that's why I try to come to everything that's happening in the church, if, if possible. Theo said, you know what? Samson was a Nazarite, right? Let me see if I got it in my notes. And because he was a Nazarite, I think I got that in here somewhere. I try to give credit to where credit is due. Where is it? I might have to have him come out here. But the Nazarite, uh, where is it? Of Holy Ghost. The Nazarite covenant. I'll just see if I can remember how it went. The, the Nazarite vow, you had certain things that you were not to do and certain things you were to do. And by doing those things, the very power of God, the very spirit of the Lord would be released in you and you would do great and mighty things because you were in covenant through that vow with the almighty God. Amen. So the mindset that he had was, I will be willing to do those things 
that it takes for me to be in covenant so that that the person that I'm in covenant with will be able to display his majesty, his power by his spirit. That's all we are as Christians. We have made a vow to God that we accept him as our Lord and Savior and that he through covenant can live and do his work and power through us so that he can be glorified and we would receive the benefit establishing his kingdom here in the earth realm. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, he wants to do something great today. Something great today. Hmm. Where was I at? Matthew 9 and verse 36. I just heard this. Don't quit. Tony, don't quit. Who is that for? Don't quit. Listen, I'm 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 going to be I'm trying to stay right here. I'm I'm trying to be as transparent as possible that our mindset has to change. Change brings hope of the new. If you're not willing to get rid of a bondage mindset, a grasshopper mindset and mentality, a wilderness mentality, or, or I said it wrong, a grasshopper mentality with a wilderness mindset, then you are going to be locked in that thing. You have to have a renewed mind with the kingdom of God as your focus, and the focus of the kingdom of God is Jesus, the Christ of God. Without that, you will continue to go around the mountain, be on the treadmill and going absolutely nowhere. But with him, all things are possible. Listen, we keep saying it is finished and we all mean it. I know that. However, are we standing still? Are we moving in the same direction in lockstep with one another and the Holy Spirit of God. Does that resonate? No one? Okay. Let's read this. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues. That's what I was just trying to do. I was doing a little teaching. And then I tried a little, little, little something else, but it, it didn't go over well. <laughs> Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. But when he saw the most, listen, he had taught them, he had preached, he had healed every manner of sickness and disease. But then when he, the word says when he, the will of God kicked in. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? The will of God kicked into him. And he had compassion upon them. Because they were weary. He just taught. He just preached. He just met their physical need as far as being healthy. And he. Our God. Wants to do all that we have need of. And he's the only one that knows all that we have need of. And he can teach us, he can preach, he can heal, he can deliver. But the bottom line is, that's not all. We have to have compassion for one another. Our differences do not dictate the will of God for us. If we are having issues, it's because we are not focused on what he has said. We have a bondage mentality 
and mindset. We have a grasshopper mentality and wilderness mindset. And our eyes are not on the kingdom of God. We are not seeking to be a disciple of Christ. Ah, this sounds like admonition, but it, it, it isn't. I pray that, that you're receiving it by grace because I'm including myself in this. Because I don't want to walk by myself and you don't either. You want to be in step with the spirit of God and your brethren whom you are to love more than anything else. That this word is guiding us and leading us and bringing us to all places where there is a need for the compassion of Christ. To be exhibited from our lives. It's real quiet. I'm not admonishing. I am not. I pray I'm exhorting Amen. that we hunger and thirst for this. Yeah. And be as one with the same mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. This is what God wants to do today. <laughs> now that I got out the way. All of us here today help Holy Ghost. All of us here today have been made for greater than we've already achieved and or understand right now. And God's desire right now is to have you understand that he has greater for you. However, the mindset that you may have at this time is holding you and the Lord back, the forfeit. Remember earlier, you forfeit when you have a mindset that is not like and for God. You forfeit those things that are presently supposed to be yours. Amen. So today I'm going to begin with repentance. I'll be the first. OK, and I'm going to say a prayer now, if everyone wants to participate in this. <laughs> I didn't ask Pastor John about this, OK? Because I've been given the authority. Amen. Romans 12. Verse one and two. Passion. Do you have the pat? Never mind. I can find it. Do you have the passion version? Romans 12. Verse one and two. Thought I was done. There we go. The trans, the uh, passion translation. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices. And live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Amen. So. God's desire today. Is for us to answer the call. Of being a living sacrifice to openly display your decision for a kingdom of God mindset. Now, this is the prayer. <laughs> Help Holy Ghost. <laughs> Father, I thank you for Jesus 
the name above all names. And all that he has won for us, I receive. Now, Father, I relinquish my life wholly unto you as a living sacrifice. As he relinquished his body for me, nailed to the tree, me too. I am nailed to the cross with him. I am a living sacrifice because I am alive now, physically. And so, Father, I thank you that as I live, I will be your sacrifice for the altar. And every time there's a choice hmm, for me or Christ, I choose Christ. So as God has given us the opportunity, whoever said that or agreed with it in your heart or disagreed with it, Whoever said it, though, and believed it, you have said to God, I am willing to be yours at all cost, a living sacrifice. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And so that his life will be the life that people will see. I will live a repentant life seeking forgiveness so that the light of the light of God will shine through me continually. And also, I will receive the benefit and the rewards for my faithfulness because of your faithfulness to reward them that diligently seek after you. Mm. So is there anyone that wants to come up and be anointed to be declared a living sacrifice unto God today? I'll say it again. God wants to do something great today. Accepting that as a challenge or accepting that as a humbleness in your heart, both you'll reap the rewards and benefits. In Jesus' name. Anyone? Come on up.